Bill Martinez live back with you. And Dr. Stephen Heyman is with us. His book, Stress, Climbing Out of the Pits with God. And um, Stephen, before we get back into this, um, you know, speaking of stress, particularly here in what uh, is happening in our country today uh, with Trayvon Martin, uh, here's this community that up to now has just... Uh, I, I mean, up until, you know, this incident, I should say, was, you know, a small, you know, bedroom community. People got along. It was uh, just rolling along as normal. And then you have this incident where this uh, 17-year-old was tragically shot. And, uh, you know, and it's been six weeks and counting, uh, you know, for this investigation to take place. And there's lots of stress, to say the least, because we don't have all the facts. And unfortunately... Uh, there was a lot of emotion. So I got to imagine for you, when you look at, um, you know, your experience in dealing with all sorts of stress and, and incidents, crisis incidents that can come into people's lives and how they react to them, uh, this has got to be a, a, a study in human sociology for you. Yeah, I, I think, Bill, part of what's going on uh, in society today, the economy, uh, people are struggling. People uh, are stressing about so many different things. And so uh, something like the Trayvon situation could be the straw that breaks the uh, donkey's back. And what we're really seeing is people are, are speaking out as it relates to what's going on in their lives anyway, the, what, they're, what they're experiencing, what they're feeling. Mm-hmm. And so uh, when, you, when you attach uh, the feelings you have with what happened with uh, Trayvon one then uh, that's the reason why you're seeing all the uproar. Uh, as you said, there, there's so much that we don't know. We, mm-hmm. we, we have information coming from one person as to what happened, but the, the, uh, the country seems to be uh, in an uproar about getting something done, and there is due process, and, and, and people need to look at that process. But, but essentially, because every, people are stressing, um, you were talking about the undercare and the stress, most of us don't even realize that we are. We have schedules. We're interacting with people. Uh, we're trying to pay pe- uh, our, our. We're trying to pay our bills. Uh, mm-hmm. There's just something. There. There's a lot going on in a lot of our families. And so, normally, when we're uh, experiencing that kind of thing, uh, we tend to focus on something and and vo- vocalize that. And I think that's what's going on with the Tra- Trayvon situation. Right. Well, Denise D'Souza, I thought, had one of the best insightful perspectives on the whole situation. And uh, because I believe there's a I believe and this this may be naive, Stephen, so you can tell me differently. I mean, um, you've been raised uh, and, and in a different you know, aspect of America as I have. We, uh, even though I'm I'm Hispanic and I've dealt with a little bit of prejudice, um, certainly not as much as uh, I would say that a, uh, you know, that, that most black people have. But uh, he he said that they grow up with this meta narrative of, you know, being you know oppressed and and having. You know, that blacks are always, you know, getting the short end of the stick and, and, uh, you know, it's just not fair for them. And, you know, and then you get a, a, a general part of America that it's like a lot of this meta narrative that a black child grows up with is, is not even in the consciousness. I mean, we're talking about stress not even in the consciousness of America, much less, you know, prejudice. And, um, and what I see is that there is a uh, it's almost like a bell curve, you know, where you've got people on both ends that are extreme, you know, that that see it as uh, something they live with day to day and, and others that are very, you know, they're very prejudicial. But those are on the extreme ends. But in the middle, there is a I believe a majority of America that it is living out that dream that uh, Dr. Martin Luther King had that said that uh, they're here for this day to look upon an individual, not based on the color of his skin, but on the quality of his character. And um, I, I may be naive and wrong about that, uh, but I just see, uh, you know, a small you know majority on both sides that drive the extreme element of the racial divide in our country. Well, it, it exists. Uh, obviously, and we, 
it really has to do with how we perceive life itself, mm-hmm. uh, the things that we've been exposed to, and so those things that we really don't know much about, mm-hmm. uh, then we have reactions to it, and, and whether we admit it or not, all of us have some prejudice, all of us ha- have assumptions about people, uh, uh, I think you, you know I'm 62 years old, right. of course now I don't look that way. Um, and, and most people, they think I'm younger than what I am. Uh, so they have a prejudgment as it, re- as it relates to, hey, this guy is a, is a black man, A, B, C, D. Mm-hmm. Well, when they, when they sit down and they talk to me, they learn how old I am, they, they, they learn that I am a man of God, then their, their uh, assumptions or presumptions about me change somewhat. So my, my point is, we, we all walk around with those things, uh, and they're co- coping skills. And again, you're talking about stress. They're coping mm-hmm. skills to help us survive in today's society. Uh, yes, I think things are better holistically for, for, for Asian Americans, for Latinos, for, for African Americans, for uh, the different ethnic groups that are here. Uh, and I think that when you when you look at the sports and entertainment and, and and different things, you do see that there have been achievements. Uh, and and but I, I I can't get away even at the age I am now. I can't get away from the fact that I'm an African American man. Mm-hmm. Uh, I when I interact with people, first thought in my mind is how am I being perceived uh, as an African American person? And and Bill, being a, a, a a, a Latino individual, there are times that, that uh, the undercurrent is I'm Latino, and so I, I want to be perceived as American, but mm-hmm. I am Latino. And so when you're, when you're confronting people or you're talking to people, that is the first uh, forefront of your mind. Right. Well, I, I guess for me, and I don't, I don't know, maybe this is the way God has wired me, Stephen, I always look at it as a standpoint that uh, I just trusted God to you know, unveil the truth. And uh, and I've had many people through my life come to me and say, hey, this was my perception of you before. And now I now that I know you and I'm sure you probably run into the same thing just in, in this short story that you're relating. And and I, you know, I thank God for that, that it's, a, you know, it's kind of like that uh, kind of a nice surprise when you meet other men of God or even people that are on their way and their journey to understand more about God and life. And you have an opportunity to, um, you know, speak, not only speak the truth, but be the truth uh, in as much as we can, not not suggesting for any moment that either one of us is perfect. We're not. We're, we're working out our, our faith you know, fear, fear, fearfully, you know, and, and, and hopefully faithfully. And, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, these things that we need to transcend in humanity, we cannot do in and of ourselves. And just as your book uh, stresses that you have to do it, you know, with a spiritual component, you, you have to do it with the power of God. If you don't, you're going to be overrun because the, just the natural course of life and the stress that it brings, um, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's everywhere. And, and you're absolutely right. But what you're telling me is that God is, is developing you. He's maturing you because what I, I, Jesus Christ itself, when he was at the well, um, and um, there, there was a, a lady there. Well, she she, she didn't happen to be you, uh, mm-hmm. but he responded uh, to her. And, and and many times throughout his walk on the face of the earth, he didn't allow someone else's background or or, or whatever to keep him from doing the various things that he and he did. So when we when we're walking with God. He is supposed to develop us to the point of seeing people not for the color of their skin, not because of the the accent that they have or the the straightness of their hair or the kinkiness of their hair. We're supposed to see people with love and ingratiate those qualities and characteristics that really make them who they are. But that takes God to do that because it's a matter of survival, Bill. 
Exactly. Exactly. And it, and the way God designed it, uh, Stephen, is that we have to do it together. We're not an island unto ourselves. Dr. Stephen Heyman has been our guest. His book, I highly recommend it to you, Managing Stress with the Power of God, Climbing Out of the Pits with God. Stephen, thank you so much for being with us. Lord bless you. It is 18 minutes before the top of the hour, America. This is Bill Martinez Live. 